So I changed the title to Stages on Life's Way. Um, and as a kind of initial image, I thought that this wonderful multiple taller of Augustus the Elder with the figure of Fortuna, Fortune, would be an appropriate start with a battle scene in the background. But um, uh, you'll see why. Um, also, I wanted to start with this, one of my favorite um, quotes from Shakespeare. And it sort of is um, relevant to everything that follows. It's the famous monologue by Jacques from um, As You Like It about the seven ages of man. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover sighing like a furnace with a woeful ballot made to his mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice in fair round belly with good capon lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventual history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. <clears throat> the beginning. Well, I didn't know quite how to present this, but um, uh, this is Lita and the Swan, so I guess the beginning is um, procreation or whatever. Um, this is a medal of Faustina Romana. It was always thought to be of a Roman courtesan, but in fact, it, it's not. It's of a, um, a rather high-born Roman lady. Uh, and um, the, the image on the reverse is um, Lita and the Swan related to the beauty of this woman. But that's the beginning. And then birth, and I'm sorry, I'm showing very quickly some of these examples. This is um, a uh, Hohenzollern prince, um, a rather spare and yet quite lovely, I think, representation of an infant with an, an indication on the reverse of his date of birth and a kind of genius of whatever, not necessarily Cupid, but of a genius of birth. Or this, uh, once again, a German princess, but who was um, married to uh, one of the English royal uh, princes, Victoria Louisa, Adelaide Charlotte, et cetera, et cetera. You can see the, the um, uh, title. And here she's shown on the reverse. And this is a quite, quite lovely um, representation of motherhood. Uh, she's greeting her older son. And as you can see in her lap, she has the infant that she's just given birth to and around the edge are all these little sort of pooty um, celebrating this birth. And then childhood um, and one of my favorite medals. You've seen this before, I think in some of my pres presentations but it's one of my favorites, Jean Warren's uh, celebration of the birth of Louis XIV to uh, Anne, Anne of Austria and Louis the Thirteenth, um, they too waited for about twenty years or so without having children or having an heir. And she made a vow that she would build this uh, monastery or nunnery in Paris if, in fact, God um, granted her a child. And what a child! <laughs> this is Louis the Fourteenth at age about seven. Um, in this marvelous presentation of a kind of combination of official portraiture 
and a very touching and very human um, uh, scene of the relationship between the little boy and his mother. And then on the reverse, uh, one of the most glorious architectural representations on a medal of the, uh, the facade not the not not the final facade, but the facade that was um, originally designed by Montsart uh, of the Church of the Val de Grasse, which was her contribution in thanks for the birth of Louis. But this is his childhood, or this um, 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 Dutch medallion in silver of uh, William the Third as Prince of Orange. Um, uh, this is in that sort of technique of, of cast silver shells that are soldered together. And on the reverse, um, um, beside the, in, you know, beside the uh, inscription, which says he believed in God, um, uh, yeah, he's being taught by, by Athena, um, whom you can easily recognize in her armor and the um, shield with the Gorgoni Gorgonion and then the little owl at her feet. Or... This um, beautiful little medal of um, a young French girl um, by Henri Nook, um, a really kind of lovely, lovely portrait of a young girl. Then on to maturity, and I was not quite sure whom to represent in here, but I thought that this wonderful large medallion of, um, by uh, Theodore Spicer Simpson of Ella Milciner <clears throat> was rather, I thought, rather a good representation of a mature, uh, quite beautiful woman. Actually, she was a designer, an artist, and whatever, uh, but she was the mother of Joe Milziner, who those of you who are old enough, like me, <laughs> can remember him as one of the leading um, set designers on Broadway. But this is, a, again, a beautiful representation. And then, I mean, what kind of image of maturity is better than showing Napoleon at um, in the beginning of his career crossing the, um, the San Bernard in, in his, um, the Alps in his invasion of Italy, um, this totally fictional representation based on the painting by David of crossing the Alps. Actually, he crossed on the back of a donkey. Um, and um, so um, none of the sort of drama that you see here, but I thought what the heck, he's, he's as an image of a, of a mature and very accomplished person. And then marriage, um, which is another important stage on life's way. And of course, there is this most famous medal by Pisanello of the marriage of Lionello d'Este, <clears throat> showing the really sort of genius of, of inventiveness in, by Pisanello, um, where Leonello, which is you know, from if you tell, if you translate from the Italian means little Leon, um, with this very leonine head of hair, um, Pisanello has shown uh, this marvelous scene of the lion, Leon, Leonello, being taught to sing by this little Cupid, um, the sort of taming of the lion by marriage, with the este eagle from its um, from its heraldry sitting in the background. I mean, just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful representation. Or this very beautiful um, representation of the a marriage of Princess Mary uh, Stuart to William Henry, Prince of Orange. This was a standard um, representation at this period of marriage of a married couple or something shaking hands. Uh, but this is one of the most um, accomplished and beautiful and detailed representations of that sort of scene with on the reverse Bologna and palace um, um, or um, yeah, um, greeting each other as a sort of representation of the, uh, I guess, a sort of unity between the low countries and England, which didn't last very long. And then old age. And here is uh, this um, very eloquent, I think, representation of Cornelia Behrens, who um, I have the um, description, which is rather touching, um, which is, um, I have completed a century and wait for salvation. 
So this is she uh, at the age of um, of uh, 100 or celebrating her 100th year. And it shows at the top of the reverse, the Ouroboros of the, the sort of serpent with its tongue, with its tail in its mouth, which is a symbol of eternity, and then the sea for century. Um, or, skipping ahead very far, uh, here is Ronald Searle, and I think I may have shown some of his things in the past in the presentation on humor, the great illustrator and cartoonist who has reached the age of 70, and he shows himself on one of these very large, heavy uh, medals, which actually um, many were produced by the Paris Mint. And um, oddly enough, although they seem like they're cast, they're actually struck. And he's saying here, he's sort of looking up to heavens and is pierced by an arrow. And he's saying, déjà, already. And then on the reverse, he, ta he, he represents himself as um, Leakawan, struggling with the serpents and i'm not quite sure i'm not quite sure of the reference here but he says searle at 70 anyway this is old age um and then finally this um not this fellow is not has not passed yet um but he's quite old and he's a clergyman um paolo veneto and on the reverse he shows himself sitting in a chair contemplating this skull. So he is brooding upon um, uh, brooding upon death. And then finally another Dutch medal. Um, and these these were produced for all sorts of occasions, for marriage, for for um, birth, for death, for whatever. And you can see there's a disparity between the dates of the artist and the date of this actual commemoration. These were often given to people who, who participated in the ceremony, in the funeral ceremony, pallbearers, whatever. But the imagery was created originally in the 17th century by Wotter Muller, or after Wotter Muller, who was a great Dutch medalist. And then they would be there as um, sources, oh, almost like greeting cards, but sources for the future. So this is actually commemorating the death of two um, quite young children um, who both died around in 1734 or very near each other but is is filled with the images of death here is the corpse which is obviously not a little child um, and then and then um, uh, cupids or not cupids really but pudi of death but on the reverse you have these two rather forbidding skeletons one with a scythe and the other holding uh, uh, the inverted torch, which is another symbol of death. And, and then on the top, the, again, this um, uh, poor of death, which is, who is blowing bubbles, which is um, significant of the fragility of life, of the quickness of life. Poof, that's it. 